Hello and welcome back to our channel. One of our most popular videos is one about radio frequency, band and spectrum. This was made nearly two years ago and does not contain much information about 5G spectrum. With all the spectrum auctions and allocations in progress, we thought it would be worth making a quick video on the 5G spectrum. There are two versions of this video, the short one and the long one. This is the short version. If you prefer the long version, click on the link in the top right corner. In this short version, we will not talk in detail about millimeter wave and non-millimeter wave 5G. If you would like to know the difference between MM wave and non-MM wave 5G, again, please click on the link in the top right corner. There is always debate around which frequency is the right frequency, low frequency, mid-band frequency, or really high frequency. The answer is not simple. Higher frequency means faster decay. What this means is that for the same antenna height, same antenna configuration, and same power, the coverage area will be decreased at a higher frequency. This is independent of the technology, it's just the law of physics. Similarly, low frequency means larger cell size hence a greater number of users. This means that each user will generally have lower throughput as there are more users in the cell. Finally, higher frequency gets reflected from walls and has poor penetration, while lower frequency gets attenuated but still penetrates. This is probably the most important point to remember as we want 5G to reach indoors as well as outdoors. As a result, for 5G to be ubiquitously available everywhere, there needs to be a three-pronged approach to spectrum. The coverage layer, which is below 1 GHz or sub 1 GHz, is required to penetrate indoors from outside. The capacities layer, between 1 and 6 GHz, is required to provide higher data throughput using larger bandwidths. This frequency is also a compromise as it's possible to have reasonably good indoor penetration and similarly a reasonably mid-sized cell outdoors. Finally, you have a high throughput layer which uses the frequency between 6 and 100 gigahertz. As this is quite a high frequency, the cell sizes are generally quite small. Beamforming can help increase the cell size, but that adds to the weight, cost and power consumption. Having said that, all high throughput layers solutions include massive MIMO and beamforming. While in theory we talk about frequencies from 0 to 100 GHz for 5G, in practice 3GPP has defined two ranges of frequency called FR1 and FR2. FR1 covers frequency from 450 MHz to 6 GHz. This upper range of 6 GHz will be changing to 7.125 GHz to bring it in line with the frequency range being studied for the new Wi-Fi standards beyond 802.11 AX or Wi-Fi 6. Frequencies range FR2 covers frequencies from 24.25 GHz to 52.6 GHz. To provide a bit of background, the frequencies below 6. GHz have already been studied by the ITU radio group in the past and have been allocated for mobile and other services. In some frequency bands, IMT or mobile is allowed to be the primary technology, while in certain other bands, mobile is the secondary technology, with the primary technology being something else. You have to note here that ITU just provides guidance. In the end, each country has a regulator that decides which frequency will be used for which technology. The advantage of following ITU guidance is that the spectrum is harmonised between different countries, at least within a particular region. This avoids interference and roaming issues, etc. Now, coming back to this picture, in the World Radio Conference 2015, also known as WRC15, each region proposed frequencies above 6 GHz they wanted to study for 5G. So if you see Africa, for example, they wanted the ITU to allow 7.075 GHz to 10.5 GHz to be studied for 5G suitability. Similarly, the Americas wanted to study 10 to 10.45 GHz for 5G suitability. As you can see, there are a lot of proposals and WRC looks at frequency for everything, including baby monitors, wireless microphones, satellites, etc. 
So for 5G, it came up with a list of frequencies that could be officially studied for 5G. There is another ITU World Radio Conference, WRC 19, later this year. Many of these frequencies will officially be allowed for 5G based on the study results. Here, if you look at the Americas again, you will see the frequency range 27.5 to 29.5 gigahertz, which is generally known as 28 gigahertz. Not only countries like the US, but also Japan, South Korea, etc., wanted this particular frequency to be included for 5G study. But because this is used heavily by satellite operators for Earth stations, ITU did not include this frequency for study. Anyway, many of these countries are testing 5G in this frequency, regardless of what ITU said. In the end, ITU can just provide recommendations. They do not have the power to compel any country to do anything they do not wish to. So this is a chart from Qualcomm. As you can see, these are the bands being used for 5G trials and in many cases already auctioned. You will notice that I have highlighted the 28 GHz band in red, as I explained earlier. The four countries using this band heavily are the USA, Canada, Japan and South Korea. In summary, the most popular coverage layer frequency is 700 MHz. 3.5 GHz is the most popular capacity layer band and 26 to 28 GHz is the most popular high throughput layer frequency. If we look at the FR1 bands defined by 3GPP, we can see that while some of the bands are new, an operator is more than welcome to use any of the existing 3G or 4G bands for 5G. There are of course some new bands defined for 5G. We often see articles claiming that 5G will have large amounts of bandwidths, etc. If you look at the bandwidths for different bands, for 5G, you can have bandwidths as low as 5 MHz. Once you go to the higher frequencies, you can have bandwidths as large as 100 MHz. What we want to highlight here is that you can have a 5G system showing a 5G logo, but with very small bandwidths, not necessarily giving high speeds. Before we look at an example, we quickly want to remind the users that all 5G deployments today are known as non-standalone or NSA 5G networks. Here, LTE continues to be the master node and 5G is deployed as a secondary node. If you are not familiar with this, please check out our recent presentation on 5G terminology. Looking at an example, T-Mobile USA is rolling out 5G in its 600 megahertz band which is already being used for 4G. As this is an NSA 5G deployment, T-Mobile will use a chunk of spectrum for 4G and another chunk for 5G. This way 5G can reach everywhere. Using the carrier aggregation from 4G, it can continue to provide high speeds, but it won't be very different from 4G until they add a new capacity layer 5G spectrum. Sprint is another US operator that is looking to refarm some of their 2.5 gigahertz spectrum for 5G. This spectrum is heavily used today for 4G. Looking at all the new bands that were defined just for 5G, the bandwidths available from the bands is quite large, but that does not mean each country will allocate large chunks of spectrum to the operators. We will look at a few examples in a minute. For the new FR2 bands, generally referred to as millimeter wave bands, they can have bandwidths of 50, 100, 200 and 400 megahertz. Looking at some of the 5G auction results from different parts of the world, in South Korea each operator received 80 or 100 megahertz of the C band, which is the 3.5 to 3.6 gigahertz band or the capacity layer. Each operator also received 800 megahertz of the MM wave spectrum. This is generally as good as it can get.
Japan recently announced the results of its 5G spectrum auction. Each operator received 100 or 200 megahertz of the capacity layer band and 400 megahertz of the high throughput layer band. This is very good too. Italy allocated 5G spectrum in all three bands, the coverage layer in 700 megahertz, the capacity layer in 3.7 gigahertz, and the high throughput layer in the 26 gigahertz band. If we look at the UK, for example, only the capacity layer band was auctioned for 5G in the 3.4 gigahertz band. The operator 3 has additional spectrum, which it acquired when it bought UK broadband, but from the recent 5G auction point of view, the operators received between 40 and 60 megahertz of capacity layer spectrum. This is far from an ideal scenario. Finally, there are a lot of unnecessary rumors about the dangers of 5G. So we wanted to show where the different technologies sit on the spectrum chart. If we start with cellular first, 2G, 3G and 4G sit here, with the most popular bands being 900 MHz, 1800 MHz and 2100 MHz. The most popular 5G bands are 700 MHz and 3.5 GHz, so not very different from 3G, 4G. We have shown 28 and 32 GHz as popular millimeter wave frequencies. Now, if we look at Wi-Fi frequencies, the most popular band is the 2.5 GHz ISM band which is used not only for Wi-Fi, but also Bluetooth, microwave ovens, etc. Then we have the 5G gigahertz Wi-Fi. The new 802.11ax can also work in the 6 gigahertz band. The new standard after 802.11ax being studied uses frequency range from 1 gigahertz to 7.12 gigahertz. Then you have the 60 gigahertz YGIG which can be 802.11 AD or 802.11 AY standards. So if we combine both the cellular and Wi-Fi charts, we get something like this. Here we should like to point out that 5G frequencies are not very different to the existing cellular standards and Wi-Fi frequencies. There are a lot of organizations studying the impacts of these new frequencies. No harmful effects have been seen as yet. You will notice that there are many papers and videos that make claims of harmful effects, but these are more hearsay and not backed by any proper research and analysis. We will continue to monitor and inform our viewers when we hear something positive or negative, as long as it's from a reliable source. We hope you liked this short presentation. It's a bit longer than we thought it would be, but if you'd like to learn more, please check out the longer version of this 5G Spectrum video. Many thanks.